joining you for another live stream on Saturday afternoon here in May with college football, a distant memory from last season and Georgia's national championship blunder against Alabama and losing uh, in overtime and so, so far away, August camp and uh, September 1st and that opening weekend, Labor Day weekend. This is why we're here is to provide you with college football content during this dead period and throughout the schedule. Of course, we bring you analysis of all the games, all the coaching changes, ratings and rankings analysis that uh, you just can't contain here at Mark Rogers TV. For the audio version, you go to Google Play, Podbean, Stitcher, and iTunes if you want to watch me and others and uh, join the chat here on a regular basis throughout each and every week, then you join me on YouTube. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel where you will receive the notifications uh, of the live stream so you can jump on, ask your questions, make your comments, join the discussion with the other folks that jump on so you don't necessarily just need to comment to me, ask me questions, or tell me I'm an idiot or I'm a genius, whatever. Uh, typically it's hopefully something in between, otherwise you may have an issue, uh, but, uh, join the conversation, uh, uh, with the other fine folks that, uh, are regulars here at Mark Rogers TV. So we bring on the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the industry on a regular basis. And what we're in the middle of doing right now, I have looked at the schedules going ahead that have been signed the contracts that have been signed for the out-of-conference games for each and every conference. We have combed through the Big Ten most recently, just posted a few seconds ago. We just got done with the live stream there, the SEC and the ACC. Now we look at the Big 12. And let's go right through it. So with the other uh, scheduling analysis, I had jotted down the games and uh, made a few notes, but basically went off the top of my head as I typically do. I will do that full throttle here for the Big 12. I have not written down anything, so I will not ignore the live chat, but I've got to use this computer and go back and forth between two windows to uh, see the live chat, but also look at the schedule starting with the Matt Rule-led Baylor Bears, 2018 for the Bears, and this is a program that notoriously schedules no one. It's embarrassing. It's slightly better and was starting last season with a game against Duke on the road, but it's still pretty bad. Baylor in 2018 plays Duke the third week after playing Abilene Christian and Texas San Antonio. In 2019, the Bears play Rice, Texas San Antonio, and Stephen Austin. That is Baylor's schedule out of conference in 2019. I know they're down. I know they won one or two games last season, one game last season. There has to be a power five opponent. I'm asking for two power five opponents. And again, this is a scheduling analysis series that I will uh, wrap up by going to the non-conference schedule and giving you my formula and how I would schedule. And it includes two power fives for everyone. So these schools that don't schedule anyone, and we saw where even Ohio State in 2019 doesn't play anyone in the Power Five. That should not happen. So for 2019 in Baylor, Stephen F. Austin, Texas San Antonio, and a game against Rice on the road. 2020, it's uh, Ole Miss. All right. In Houston at uh, Reliant Stadium, whatever they're calling it these days, Louisiana Tech and Incarnate Word. In 2021, it's Texas State and BYU. In 2022, it's Louisiana Tech, Texas State, and BYU on the road. And BYU is technically a Power 5 school. I, I consider them a Power 5 opponent. I consider them to be in that range of a mid-tier Power 5 program. Typically, they were awful last year. But uh, need to score schedule more than just BYU. In 2023 for Baylor, they've got dates against Texas Tech. I'm sorry, Texas State. They do play Texas Tech. Texas State, Utah, and Louisiana Tech on the road. And then there's really nothing else scheduled for Baylor except for a game on the road against Utah in 2024. Baylor at Utah, at least that's something. 
And then in 2027 and 28, you've got home and home against Oregon. So Baylor finally gets it going with the Utah series and with Oregon home and home. Uh, Utah comes up in 2023 and 24, but before that, Ole Miss in Houston to start out 2020. But besides that, just more of the same from Baylor. Garbage. All right, Iowa State, we know who they're playing. And if you want to see me rail on a program, go back to the Big Ten scheduling series, the video we just posted, the live stream, and right off the top, I dive into Iowa. So this is going to be similar, although I don't hold Iowa State to quite the standard that I do Iowa. Iowa State in 2018 takes on South Dakota State, Iowa on the road, and Akron. In 2019, Iowa State meets Northern Iowa, Iowa, and Louisiana Monroe. In 2020, in South Dakota, Iowa on the road, and UNLV. And this is what they're all going to sound like. In 2021, Iowa State takes on Northern Iowa, Iowa, and UNLV on the road. In 2022, it's Southeast Missouri, Iowa, and Ohio. In 2023, the Cyclones take on Northern Iowa, Iowa, and Ohio on the road. In 2024, it's North Dakota and Arkansas State. So Iowa State felt it imperative to schedule North Dakota and Iowa State into Arkansas State in 2024, and they've got Arkansas State on the road in 2025. So these first two schedules, looking at Baylor, and especially now Iowa State, are deplorable. Kansas, this is going to be much of the same. And Kansas gets no mulligan from me. They get no sort of pass. They are in the Power Five. They don't play like it, and they certainly don't schedule like it, but they should schedule like it. In 2018, this fall, Kansas takes on Nickel State. They go to Central Michigan, and they take on Rutgers. In 2019, Kansas has Indiana State, Coastal Carolina, and a date at Boston College. That's a decent effort right there. In 2020, Kansas takes on Wagner, Boston College and Coastal Carolina on the road. In 2021, you've got BC taking on South Dakota, Coastal Carolina, and Duke on the road. And then other than that, let's see, for Kansas in 2022, they go to Houston and they take on Duke. So that's there's an upgrade for Kansas football right there, taking on Houston, who's typically good and one of the better group of fives, and then also taking on Duke. So I'm going to give Kansas a break. They're finally upgrading the schedule in 2022. In 2023, similarly, against Illinois and Houston. So you got a power five, and who knows how good Illinois is going to be then. Uh, they've been awful for the past few years, but Kansas has Illinois and Houston. Then they take on Illinois again in 2024, they have signed up for Washington State as Kansas. Good for them in 2027 and 28. Kansas taking on Washington State home and home. So Kansas State over the next few years, they've got Rutgers and Boston College a couple times. They did play Rutgers this past season. Uh, they've got uh, this series against Illinois. And what I see that gives me a little bit of hope for Kansas scheduling is that they've got Houston and a Power Five in the same schedule. That's better than Baylor. It's better than what Iowa State is scheduling right now. Let's go to Kansas State. Kansas State has typically not been a team, as most of the Big 12 has not been a program that has wanted to play anyone. So for Kansas State, we know that they've got Mississippi State coming up. I, I was glad to see that series signed. Kansas State has that Mississippi State date coming up this year in Manhattan. They also play South Dakota and Texas San Antonio. In 2019, Kansas State goes to Mississippi State. They take on Bowling Green, and they've got Nichols. Then they've got the big Vanderbilt series to conclude in 2020, that game in Manhattan. And if you recall, Kansas State is a top 25 team this past season in week one or two, went to Nashville, and were a bit embarrassed by the Commodores 14-7. But in 2020, Vandy visits Kansas State, 
and the Wildcats also play North Dakota and Buffalo. In 2021, you've got Stanford, Kansas State. So the Wildcats open the season in Palo Alto or wherever they play now. Uh, Stanford, they they went to Stanford to start the season in Christian McCaffrey a couple years ago. And so this is the return trip of Stanford and David Shaw coming to take on Bill Snyder if he's still kicking in 2021. Stanford at Kansas State, and the Wildcats also play Southern Illinois and Nevada. All right, for Kansas State in 2022, they've got Missouri. So that's a nice little series there. Kansas State, Mizzou, old Big 12 foe, 2022. Mizzou, Tulane, and Abilene Christian. Kansas State, of course, goes to Mizzou in 2023. Then they pick up Arizona on the schedule in 2024 and 25. They play Tulane again in 24. They've got Washington State on the schedule. Those dates are in 2026 and 29, home and home. They've got Colorado on the schedule as a former Big 12 foe. So Kansas State with that former Big 12 rivalry theme going with Mizzou, home and home, and also Colorado. And so the Colorado games for Kansas State are in 2027 and 28, and then they've got a series against uh, Rutgers. Rutgers, Kansas State, mark it down on your calendars, 20, 30, and 31. So there you go for Kansas State. Uh, the return game from Vandy in 2020 this season is Mississippi State. So basically the home and homes that make sense here is to conclude the Stanford series in 2021. The home and homes against Mississippi State, Vandy, Mizzou, Colorado, Arizona, Washington State, and Rutgers for Kansas State football. I have yet to see a game that really excites me here. We're going to Oklahoma, and I know from going through the other conference schedules that uh, we're going to get it here. In 2018, UCLA is on the schedule to come to Norman in the Troy Aikman Bowl. Uh, Florida Atlantic and Army also on the schedule. And after I conclude the uh, Oklahoma schedules for the next 10 years, I'll jump on the live chat and see what you guys have. In 2019, Oklahoma takes on Houston, South Dakota, and they go to the Rose Bowl to take on the Bruins. 2020, it's Mizzou State, Tennessee, and a date with Army on the road. In 2021, it's Tulane on the road and Nebraska. So we talked about that in our previous live stream of Nebraska and Oklahoma and all the great um, memories from the 70s and 80s of Nebraska and Oklahoma vying for the Big 8 championship brought back to life. The last time the two teams met was for the Big 12 championship at the conclusion of 2009 with uh, Colt McCoy throwing that infamous pass out of bounds with one second left to set up the game-winning field goal and send Texas to the national championship game. In 2022, Oklahoma goes to Nebraska. They also have UTEP on the schedule. In 2023, Oklahoma has no game scheduled. Got to schedule all three non-conference games, so they're wide open. In 2024, Oklahoma has Temple at Tennessee and Tulane. And, of course, Oklahoma and Tennessee just concluded a series in 2015 and 16 with the Sooners winning both games. Uh, they were the better team, certainly, in the first matchup at home. Then they went to Tennessee and pulled one out of the fire late after being down by two touchdowns, and that was really uh, the emergence of uh, Baker Mayfield early that season in 2025. And I, I failed to answer my little trivia question from the previous live stream, which was, what is the significance of Michigan playing Oklahoma? This is what it is. Michigan, Oklahoma was the very first and non Rose Bowl to be played by the Big Ten. So prior to 1975, for teams that did not win the Big Ten championship and advanced to the Rose Bowl, they were not allowed to play in any other bowl games. There were seasons in which Michigan didn't lose a game. They tied Ohio State one year and they didn't even get to a bowl game as the number three team in the country. And then the Big Ten allowed a second-place team to go to bowl games starting in 1975, and then just a few years after that, the floodgates opened and you had five and six teams going to bowl games. But Michigan, Oklahoma, 1975 was the first time that a Big Ten team that did not win the conference went to a bowl game. 
2024, Oklahoma plays Temple at Tennessee and Tulane. That 2025 uh, matchup against Michigan, and they go to Temple. Oklahoma is going to Temple. Don't know what that's all about. In 2026, they play Michigan at the Big House. They've got LSU on the schedule in 2027 and 28. They've got Temple again in 28. They've got the the Nebraska games that we talked about. So not only did Oklahoma and Nebraska renew their rivalry of sorts, they also just didn't schedule the home and home, but they scheduled two home and home. So they play four times in the span of about six seasons. So that is definitely good to see. Sooners with big matchups coming up against UCLA home and home, Nebraska four times, Tennessee home and home, and uh, Michigan and LSU home and home as well as Temple home and home. So the Sooner is going to go to Philadelphia. Let's check out the Cowboys of Oklahoma State, and we want to remind you that uh, this is Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. You will find the best college football content consistently anywhere with the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers across the industry, plus analysis from myself, and we have the best discussions on college football each and every day throughout the year. Just this past Thursday night, we talked uh, Miami, Ohio State, Michigan. Uh, we also talked Arizona State as well uh, with some of the best bloggers around, and those are posted, of course, to my YouTube channel where there are now more than 7,000 videos on college football. And uh, if you'd like to know what we're up to and what we will be posting in future weeks and months, check out to the front page of my YouTube channel and you will see uh, basically what uh, what we're up to and uh, what we have planned for the next uh, few months in regards to comment uh, in, in terms of content. And uh, we are always looking for your suggestions and uh, listen to you and what you would like to see. All right. In checking out the live chat before we move on to Oklahoma State, of course, the Cowboys coming off a bowl win against Virginia Tech, but they've got to replace Mason Rudolph with a four-man battle for the quarterback spot. And... Like we uh, mentioned just a few minutes ago on the previous live stream, looking at the Big Ten future schedules, I'm looking to produce a series in which we're looking at every quarterback battle in the country. So if it's Michigan State uh, with Brian Lewerke, if it's Penn State with Trace McSorley, we're not going to address those situations. It's lockdown. Uh, we're going to look at the quarterback battles across the country, and we're going to assess the pros and cons of each quarterback and give you our odds of who's going to win that battle in August. Navy Thomas giving me genius status. Tremendous. You were great to tide us over in the dead time. It is the dead time, and this traditionally uh, the dead time between the end of spring camp and the beginning of media days and August camp in mid to late July. And uh, the, the one fun aspect of this is this is when we can get creative. So the rest of the year, my channel typically reacts to all the coaching changes. Of course, uh, Black Monday following the end of the college football season and all the analysis we have to do in tracking the coaches and the speculation over who's going to gain jobs. And of course, recruiting throughout the year, spring football in March and April. And then of course the season kicks off with media days in late July and then going through the entire season where we're just running around, just talking about the best time of the year with the games actually on the field. So this, the dead time being the one advantage here is that uh, there's a bit of a lull so we can start to rank and rate and really analyze schedules and players and personnel and coaches and so forth. So that's the one good thing about that. Been uh, watching 2018 spring games today. Navy Thomas, please. I, I say this all the time. I get that much excited for spring football and then I actually turn the games on and after I see a few plays I remember okay yeah this is not real football and uh I I do it just to gain some insight into what's going on and hear the storylines and the narratives and try to gather something I I do think that the wide receiver defensive back matchups 
in these spring games mean something because they're on an island. It's not scheme specific. It's a one-on-one -on -one battle typically, and you can you can learn from that. I think you can learn from a quarterback who has an awful day during a spring game, uh, not necessarily from quarterbacks who have big days because of the defensive philosophy being very vanilla. But when the quarterbacks struggle, I think that shows us something. So there's very little we can gain, <coughs> excuse me, from the spring games. And we also have to keep in consideration that we over evaluate during the spring games because this is the game that we can see. Uh, the coaches have four or five other scrimmages that are just as intensely uh, competed uh, that they're evaluating talent. But anyway, maybe Thomas, hey, if you love watching the spring games and you're still diving into those, be my guest. Who is the BYU school you keep repeating? Who is this BYU school you keep repeating? <laughs> uh all right, do Texas first. Uh, we haven't touched Texas, have we? We have yet to get to Texas. We'll we'll get there, Griffin. Appreciate you jumping on board. I appreciate you being that hard up for football. I get it, especially for college football because it's the longest off season. I say it all the time. If you're an NBA fan, if you love Major League Baseball, you blink your eye after the season's over and they're starting right back up again. But for college football. It's January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, all the way to September. It's the longest off season and the shortest season in sports. It's tough to live through. All right, let's uh, strike up the future schedules and go to Texas. And somebody's looking for Texas. I believe Griffin's looking for Texas. So let's give it a look with the Longhorns coming off a uh, of course, they're in the middle of a series, actually, with both Tex with uh, Maryland and also, of course, with the USC Trojans. So that's what we see here in 2018. So for the Longhorns, they've got to go to Landover, Maryland. And they are expecting and preparing, of course, to enact revenge against the Terps, who came in during Tom Herman's debut and thwarted that celebration, 41-31, mostly on defensive uh, turnovers and special teams plays from the Terps. Texas at Maryland to open up 2018 on September 1st, also a game against Tulsa to lead into the USC game in Austin. 2019, Louisiana Tech, LSU. I love that game. If Texas can be back to being Texas, and they should at this point against 2019 schedule and LSU in that uh, September 7th meeting in Austin. That should be a fun one. And then they play at Rice. 2020, they get the return trip to LSU, and they've got South Florida on the schedule as well. In 2021, it's Arkansas on the road. This is another matchup that I love, being uh, an old Southwest Conference game. Arkansas, Texas were two of the most bitter rivals in college football it was one of the best matchups in the nation and uh, they resume at least for one season there with arkansas at home against texas and then rice and texas play as well in 2022 it's ohio state and texas getting back together we talked about that during our big 10 live stream and discussing the buckeyes uh, winning one of three matchups against the longhorns in the mid 2000s so it was a 2005 matchup in columbus in which Ohio State uh, could have taken a 10-point lead but dropped a touchdown pass, Ryan Hamby, in the end zone against the Longhorns. They only led by three at that point. Uh, Vince Young did his magic late, and uh, it was a tremendous game with uh, NFL players all over the field, and Texas won it uh, close, 25-22, which uh, really was the catalyst for their run to the national championship against USC. For Ohio State, they were relegated to the Fiesta Bowl, but still had a top four football team. Ohio State, Texas, in Austin on 2022. Uh, the Buckeyes and the Longhorns also played in 2006. Uh, the Buckeyes got their revenge 24 to 7 against Major Applewhite. And let's see, they of course played in the Fiesta Bowl a couple seasons later. Really good game in which Texas scored late to win it. 2023, Texas has Rice, Central Florida. Got to love that matchup as a second Power 5 type game. 
And then they go to the shoe to take on the Buckeyes in 2023, Texas, Ohio state. You know, that's just blue bloods getting together. And that's like uh, Oklahoma, Michigan, LSU and Texas. Some of the other games we've highlighted here that uh, is what college football is all about. You want to see the best playing the best and the elite brands facing off. And hopefully they're at their best when they play. And here's another one, 2024 game at Michigan coupled with the return trip to Austin by the Wolverines in 2027. And of course, Vince Young did it to Michigan as well at the Rose Bowl. Uh, the season before winning the national championship against USC, 37-35 against the Wolverines in a great game. Also for the Longhorns in 2024, they take on South Florida. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. Please join me. Uh, during my a series of uh, college football content here, uh, as you sift through the videos, you will see that we bring on the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the industry. And we also provide analysis on scheduling personnel, game previews, and rankings. I will rank all the teams 130 to number one. I will rate all the Power 5 schedules, 68 all the way up to number one as well. And I've got quarterback battles coming your way with odds of who's going to win those battles in August. All right, let's catch up with TCU football. In recent years, TCU has taken on Arkansas, and they have played Minnesota home and home. In 2018, it's Southern at SMU, and of course, the much-anticipated game against Ohio State in Arlington, Texas, uh, a game that uh, matches two teams that were battling for the final spot of the college football playoffs' first inaugural selection in 2014. 2019, you've got a date at Purdue, TCU at Purdue, and then they also have SMU. So the Horned Frogs have to schedule another game to fit, close out uh, their slotting in 2019. In 2020, they've got Cal. The return trip is in 2021, and the Big 12 is sparse on these games. The Big 12, uh, if you look at TCU in particular, past 2020, they only have one game scheduled, non-conference every season so they have to schedule the other two games so there's opportunity to to play some really good games here uh, and those contracts we'll be looking out for uh they've got cal again does tcu in 2020 and 2021 in 22 and 23 they take on colorado so another big 12 feel there of a matchup with tcu taking on colorado even though they never crossed paths in the Big 12 Conference. 2024, I like this one. TCU at Stanford. They also play the Cardinal in 27. Of course, those two teams just matched up in a bowl game that was a rather uh, memorable and uh, just this past year at the Alamo Bowl with uh, Stanford jumping out to a 21-3 lead and TCU's speed was way too much, but Bryce Love, evil, even on a bad wheel, kept Stanford in the game and uh, it was a close one at 39-37 to uh distinguishing styles of play matching up in that one and it was uh, expected to be one of the more entertaining games of the conference of the um bowl season and it was tcu has scheduled north carolina in 2025 and 26 home and home they've got duke coming up in 2028 and 29 and uh, they have the second game against purdue there must have been tons of scheduling conflicts here because they go to purdue in 2019 they don't get the return trip for 11 years when the Boilers come to town in Fort Worth in 2030. But we know what the date is. It's September 14th, 2030. All right, let's finish out. Uh, let's look at the chat first. Texas plays some real out-of-conference games, I think. Yes, they do, Ray. LSU and Ohio State in particular, and also Michigan's coming up. That 2005 game was a heartbreaker. Yes, it was in Columbus. Why didn't Major Applewhite in 2006? We didn't Major Applewhite. Uh, Colt McCoy. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I stumbled up on that one. Uh, Major Applewhite uh, quarterback about four years earlier for Texas. All right, uh, let's get back to the schedules and finish out the Big 12. We've got Oklahoma State. 
Let's tee this one up. Of course, the Cowboys coming off a win against Virginia Tech with Mason Rudolph at quarterback to close out 2017. And hopefully my computer responds. It does. 2018 for Oklahoma State. Boise State is the big matchup on September 15th. Before that, in week three, they take on Missouri State in South Alabama. In 2019, it's Oregon State on the road, McNeese State, and Tulsa on the road. So technically, they've got a Power 5 game, but it's against Oregon State. So this is disappointing for Oklahoma State fans. Oregon State is the big game in 2019 and 20. And then they also basically play the same schedule in 2019 and 20. I also don't like to see that, and I mentioned that with a few other schools that didn't even play a good game non-conference slate and not only did they not play good teams they played the three exact same teams the next year so in 2020 for the cowboys they've got oregon state at home tulsa and western illinois they've got uh, the return game against uh, boise state in stillwater in 2021 as well as playing rice in tulsa They've got Arizona State as the headliner in 2022, along with Central Michigan and Missouri State. They've got Arizona State on the road at Sun Devil Stadium in 2023, along with South Alabama. And that is it for Oklahoma State future scheduling. They've got nothing scheduled on the books past 2023. So Boone Pickens and the boys will have to get to work on some scheduling past 2023. It is wide open for Oklahoma State. So schedule somebody because right now the best they can do is Boise State and Arizona State. All right, let's close out with West Virginia and Texas Tech for the Mountaineers in 2018. They've got Tennessee in Charlotte, which would usually be a pretty daunting assignment, not necessarily this time around. Youngstown State and NC State. So West Virginia is not scheduled very difficult at non-conference. This season, I love it. Tennessee and NC State. Good matchups there for West Virginia. In 2019, they've got James Madison, Missouri, and NC State. The Mizzou game's on the road. So again, two power fives. Thank you so much, West Virginia. James Madison, Mizzou on the road, and NC State. In 2020, they've got Florida State in Atlanta. So consider this. It's been the SEC dominating this Atlanta venue on opening weekend, both on the Saturday and Monday Labor Day weekend games. West Virginia and Florida State wedged their way in there in 2020. Florida State and West Virginia in Atlanta on September 5th of 2020, along with Eastern Kentucky and Maryland. That's an old rivalry we talked about, Maryland and West Virginia. 2021, it's a date at Maryland. It's Indiana State and Virginia Tech. In 2022, for West Virginia, they go to Pitt. We know what that all means. It's the backyard brawl. It's a longstanding traditional rivalry. And also West Virginia, Virginia Tech, they played this past season. A really good game, one-score game at FedEx Field. West Virginia goes to Penn State. We talked about that during our Big Ten preview. That's one of those Eastern games from uh, way back when in college football history that involves BC, Syracuse, Maryland, Pitt, Penn State, West Virginia, and Temple. Uh, West Virginia at Penn State. They also played Pitt that year in 2023. So that's a great non-conference slate for West Virginia. That Well done by the Mountaineers here. The same deal the next year in 2024. The Mountaineers play Penn State and at Pitt. They've got Pitt as well in 2025 and East Carolina in 2026. Going to finish things off with our final team and the Texas Tech Red Raiders. And we'll see what the Red Raiders have coming up. 2018, Ole Miss at Houston. Lamar and Houston, meaning the Cougars. So if you're only going to schedule the one power five game, at least follow it up with a nice group of five and Texas tech does it here. Even Kansas did it a number of times as we credit the Jayhawks in 2019 for the red Raiders. They've got men, Montana state, UTEP and Arizona on the road, Texas tech and Arizona and Arizona state have played a few times here in recent memory. 2020, you've got Texas tech taking on UTEP, Wyoming and Arizona at home. They've got Lamar and Houston in 2021, so they've got the one open slot. That needs to be against a Power 5. 
In 2022, you've got a Texas Tech game at NC State. I like that matchup. They also have Houston. In 2023, Texas Tech going out there and scheduling Oregon in 2023 and 24. They also have Wyoming and Missouri State in 23. They have Abilene Christian and North Texas to go along with a trip to Oregon in 2024. Colorado State's the only team on the schedule in 2025, so the Power Five's games need to be scheduled. In 2026, they've got Abilene Christian and Colorado State. In 2027, Texas Tech has North Texas on the road, and they've got NC State, so a lot of NC State here for Texas Tech, and then they've got Mississippi State home and home in 28 and 29. So Texas Tech doing a better job at this season than they have in recent seasons, although they have played Arkansas, Arizona, and Arizona State the past few years. So their next 10 years are highlighted by Ole Miss in Houston, uh, Arizona home and home, uh, NC State home and home, Oregon home and home, and Mississippi State home and home as well. We will check out the live feed before we wrap things up. All right. Who knows where you guys are going with this conversation right here? We've got uh, comments about the uh, Kirby hole cut. Didn't we play Oklahoma state back in the eighties? Yeah. Ohio state, Oklahoma state. That was a Mike Gundy team when he was actually quarterbacking, right? 1989 Buckeyes won it uh, at home to open up 1989, a team that went uh, eight and four. And Oklahoma State was pretty good. They were in the fringe of the top 25 at the time as well. Baylor Sisters, the poor. Yeah, it's it's awful, Navy Thomas. Baylor's an embarrassment. Uh, they've got Duke. And uh, they did schedule Ole Miss, and that's pretty much it. All right, uh, appreciate you guys jumping on board. I've got to take off. Uh, but uh, we will come back and finish up our future schedule series with the Pac-12 very soon. Please subscribe if you haven't, uh, and if you have and enjoy the content, uh, tell your college football family and friends that we are right here to deliver the best uh, with the uh, contributors that we have across the nation, uh, bloggers, broadcasters, and writers. And of course, you've got to take on the analysis from myself as well. We will see you guys next time. I appreciate the support. We will see you next time. Have a great weekend.